Hello everyone and welcome to the eighth episode in a series where we create a design system in Figma called FDS. In this episode, we'll be updating our type styles with type variables. Now this episode is going to be less of a tutorial and more of a walkthrough. This comes down to how long it would take to create all the primitive type and semantic type variables we need to drive our type styles. And because there's no plugin that can structure them in the way they should be structured to achieve the outcome we need. And with that said, grab this file from the link in the description and let's go. Okay, so what are type variables? Well, type variables drive every value of a text style like its font family, weight, size, line height, and letter spacing. In a similar way to our color variables, they're created as primitives then assigned to semantic type variables. In this example, you can see how they come together to provide heading L's values in Figma and what they look like in code as primitive and semantic CSS variables. And you can see the values that heading L has here, like its family is family enter, weight is weight semi bold, size is size 5XL, line height is line height 5XL, and letter spacing is letter spacing XS. Those are all the raw values. And how they get translated over to their CSS variables is we've got a file that has the root variables like FDS type family enter using enter, the weight which is semi bold using 600, there's the rest. Then those are applied in a semantic mixins file. We've got font family variable FDS type family enter which points to this. And then we use them in our style sheets by including the mixins then creating an H1 like this and including the mixin FDS type heading XL, which is going to point to this, which then points to this. That's how it all comes together. And in the variables panel that we're going to have a look at soon, you'll find these two collections, primitive type and semantic type. You'll also see that I've changed the primitive and semantic color collections to primitive color and semantic color to match them. Okay, let's look at the type variables and how they're assigned to our type styles. It's all ad lib from here, so we won't need a tally prompter. All right, and you've figured out by now we're using Figma UI 3, so where are they? Oh, there they are. Okay, in this one I'm also introducing a global unit variable set. So you can see that 2, 2, 4, 4, you get the idea here. These are just values that are going to drive anything that has a size value. And in type variables, that can be size and letter spacing. So that goes all the way down to 120. But if we jump back up to the primitive type collection, we can see the different sets we've got here. So we've got family, weight, size, line height, and letter spacing. And from the top, family has enter, SF Pro text, and Roboto. Weight has regular and semi bold. Size is using those global size variables for XS, S, medium, large, all the way up to 10XL. Line height is using XS, small, medium, large, all the way up to 10XL. And if you pair two of these, we might have a size of large, it's going to be 16, and the large line height is going to be 24, which is how we've got our type style set up now. And at the bottom, we've got letter spacing with XS, small, and none. So negative 1, negative 0 0.5, and 0. Okay, that's all the primitive type variables. Let's go and have a look at how we assign these to the semantic type variables. Let's open that collection. And if we come back to the top, we can see that these two variables are working together to give us our modes of desktop, mobile, iOS, and Android. With the breakpoint for desktop being 1440, the breakpoint for mobile, iOS, and Android being 393, and we can also switch the family from Inter for responsive web to SF Pro Text for iOS and Roboto for Android. Now, if we go find our heading L, which was in our example, and isolate that, you can see how we're also switching the size between the desktop size and the mobile size. So size is switching from 5XL to 4XL, and its line height is switching from 5XL as well to line height 4XL. And if I break all of those, we can see that this style is going to be 32 and desktop and 28 and mobile, and those are the line heights there. Let's undo that. And if we come back to all variables and scroll down, we can see that we've set up everything, all the headings and all the text, right? So text here is switching to regular from semi-bold, but there are semi-bold versions of each one as well. So we've got regular and semi-bold there. 
All the values are staying the same between those two weights and we just go all the way down to text excess, which is 10 with a line height of 14. All right, we've got all of our primitive type variables assigned to our semantic type variables. Let's go and take a look at how they're applied to the text styles. And here we are at all of our type styles for web desktop, mobile, iOS, and Android. And if we select heading L, the same style it had applied to it last time is still there, right? But if we open it and then go to edit its settings, and we've got the name here, semi-bold, and the properties here, uh, semantic type, family, heading L, semi-bold, weight, its size is heading L semi bold size. The line height, you guessed it, is heading L semi bold line height. And the letter spacing is negative one. And we go down to another style where we've got text L regular. The same is set up here. So everything's now connected and we can start using them. Okay, so let's create a frame. We come down here. I'm just gonna drag it out, select it and tell it to be an iPhone 14 Pro. Just going to move that back to here and rename it type variable test. And let's just zoom in. I'm going to add some text. Just call this heading L. Let's position it about 32 from the left, 60 from the top is okay. I'm going to duplicate that. Come down here and type in text L. And then I'm going to go and add the style. So I'm going to type in heading L. Let's go down and select it. All right. I'm going to do the same for text L. Regular. Let's give these a color as well. So I'm going to go content primary and content secondary. Okay, now I'm going to select the frame and then apply one of the modes to it. So we can switch between desktop, mobile, iOS, and Android and see the width not only change, but also the type family. Okay, so let's go over to layout, scroll down and find semantic type breakpoint. All right, so that snapped it back to desktop. Then we're going to go to appearance and then select semantic type. Now desktop is the same because we're already there. But let's swap it to mobile. Okay, so what you saw there was the heading go down in size, but not the text. We don't need the text to go down in size for responsive mobile, but the heading did now. Let's swap it to iOS. Okay, the family for both of them changed to SF Pro, and then Android changes it to Roboto. Let's just move this over here and switch it back to mobile. So now we're set up in Figma in the exact same way we're set up in code, with our semantic variables and their mixins. And just to recap, we've got our primitive type variables here, where we're doing things like setting up family, weight, and size with global units. We've got the semantic type, where we're setting up the modes and their breakpoints and families. And we're following that mixin approach that we have in code, with each style having its weight, size, line height, and letter spacing variables. And you can change them by just doing it in the same way that you've learned throughout the rest of the series. And that's it for type variables. In the next episode, we'll be doing iconography. I hope you're looking after yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.